a preview to the case study on US GAAP versus IFRS financial reporting. For CNH Industrial, the most substantial difference is in the D of research and development expenses. This impacts all three financial statements, income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. In my view, the second largest difference is in the way operating leases are presented in the cash flow statement. Several less substantial differences occur in the areas of goodwill, pension, restructuring, and income tax. Each of the financial statements also has some cosmetic differences between US GAAP and IFRS. CNH International is best known through its brand Case and New Holland. They are the number two in agricultural equipment, a top five player in the Americas in construction equipment, and a global financier supporting brands, customers, and dealers. In 2024, agriculture revenue was $14 billion, construction $3.1 billion, and financial services $2.8 billion. CNH is one of the very few companies that provide US GAAP and IFRS financial reports. This is a case study where N is 1. In other words, I am just reviewing US GAAP for IFRS financial reporting for one single company. So it might be hard to generalize the findings. Let's start with putting the CNH income statements side by side. US GAAP on the left, IFRS on the right. Top line, net revenues side by side, and net income, bottom line, side by side. Revenue in 2024 was $19.8 billion in US GAAP and $19.7 billion in IFRS. Net sales or revenues from sales of goods and services is the same in both, $17.1 billion. The difference in revenue between US GAAP and IFRS is in the line finance, interest and other income. And according to the notes to the financial statements provided by the company, this is primarily due to a different classification of interest income of industrial activities. What about the bottom line? Net income or profit for the period. 2024 IFRS net income is 10% lower than US GAAP net income. That doesn't mean that the IFRS net income is always lower than US GAAP net income as 2023 IFRS net income was 2% higher than US GAAP net income. Let's lose the reconciliation of profit provided by CNH to understand the differences. IFRS profit at the top, US GAAP profit at the bottom, and the adjustments in the middle. First item on this list is development costs. It might not look very big, $15 million on total profit in excess of a billion dollars, but on a cumulative history to date basis, it is huge, as we will see when we put the balance sheets side by side. What is different in the treatment of development costs? Narrative first, then a detailed look at the CNH R&D cost numbers. Under EU IFRS, costs relating to development projects are recognized as intangible assets when cost can be measured reliably and the technical feasibility of the product, volumes and pricing support the view that the development expenditure will generate future economic benefits. Under US GAAP, development costs are expensed as incurred. So what we see here is IFRS putting the matching principle first in this case, by capitalizing part of the development cost and then amortizing them once the product is selling. US GAAP puts the conservatism principle first in this case, put all R&D costs straight into the profit or loss statement or P&L. As a result, costs incurred related to development projects that have been capitalized under EU IFRS are expensed as incurred under US GAAP. Amortization expenses of the capitalized amounts have been reversed under US GAAP. Having a look at the numbers by line item will clarify how this works. The R&D cost that both US GAAP and IFRS recognize as expense, which is the vast majority, are $727 million in 2024. Current year development costs that qualify for capitalization under IFRS are $197 million. An expense under US GAAP, not an expense under IFRS. The amortization of capitalized development costs from prior years is zero under US GAAP and $171 million under IFRS. 
impairment losses on previously capitalized development costs are zero under US GAAP and $11 million under IFRS. In total, R&D costs are $924 million under US GAAP and $909 million under IFRS. Whether US GAAP or IFRS R&D costs are higher in a specific year really depends on the balance between the capitalization of development costs on one side and amortization plus impairment of development costs on the other side. In 2024, capitalization was slightly higher than the sum of amortization plus impairment, but only by $15 million, which is 1.6% of the total R&D costs for the year. But this development cost story gets a lot more exciting when we look at the cumulative effect on the balance sheet later on. Other adjustments is a line that mainly includes three items. One, goodwill and other intangible assets. Nowadays, pretty much since the start of the 21st century, goodwill is not amortized but tested for impairment under both IFRS and US GAAP. In the distant past, goodwill was recorded as an intangible asset and amortized to income under both IFRS and US GAAP but with different amortization periods maximum 20 versus maximum 40 years. The transition from the old treatment to the new treatment, also called the adoption of the new accounting standard, happened at different time points for CNH. And apparently this can still trigger a small PL effect of $7 million between US GAAP and IFRS in 2024. Two, defined benefit plans or pension accounting slightly different between US GAAP and IFRS, leading to a P&L effect of $19 million in 2024. Three, restructuring provisions. IFRS places emphasis on the recognition of the costs of the exit plan as a whole, whereas US GAAP requires that each type of cost is examined individually to determine when it may be accrued. A $16 million P&L effect in 2024. The difference in treatment of development cost, as well as the other adjustments, lead to a tax impact. And on top of that, there are differences arising in the accounting for deferred tax assets and liabilities. That's the bulk of the substantive differences between US GAAP and IFRS in the income statement or p &L. In addition, there are some immaterial differences, items not big enough to get too excited about, as well as some cosmetic differences which affect only the appearance rather than the substance. Here's an example of two cosmetic differences in the income statement that are very much related. Cost of goods sold under US GAAP is lower than cost of sales under IFRS, purely a matter of presentation. Interest expense under US GAAP is much higher than financial expenses under IFRS. These differences are related. In the IFRS income statement, interest and other financial expenses from financial service activities included within cost of sales amounted to nearly 2.2 billion dollars in 2024 it's simply included in a different line item in the pnl no need to panic about it cnh balance sheets side by side in the form of the accounting equation assets equal liabilities plus equity us gap Assets of $42.9 billion equal liabilities of $35.2 billion plus equity of $7.7 billion. IFRS, assets of $43.6 billion equal liabilities of $35.2 billion plus equity of $8.4 billion. 2024 year-end IFRS assets are 2% higher than US GAAP assets. 2024 year-end IFRS equity is 8% higher than US GAAP equity. How did that happen? Once again, we turn to the reconciliation provided by CNH. IFRS equity at the top, US GAAP equity at the bottom, and one item really sticking out in the adjustment section, the development costs that we previously encountered in the income statement comparison. For 2024, the difference was just $15 million, but on a cumulative History to date basis, it's more than $800 million. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. 
So we find the effect on both sides of the equal sign. Goodwill and intangible assets under use gap are $4.8 billion. And under IFRS, $5.6 billion. The difference between those two numbers is the carrying amount of the capitalized development cost. Carrying amount means the originally capitalized amounts minus the accumulated amortization and minus impairments. The difference in treatment of part of the development costs affect the income statement each year. And at the end of the year, this difference ends up in retained earnings in the equity section of the balance sheet. $800 million already taken as an expense under US GAAP, still to be taken to the P&L under IFRS. Just like the income statement, the balance sheet also has immaterial as well as cosmetic differences between US GAAP and IFRS. US GAAP overview of assets on the balance sheet on the left, IFRS overview on the right. On the US GAAP balance sheet, assets are listed from most liquid at the top, cash and cash equivalents, to least liquid at the bottom. On the IFRS balance sheet, it's the other way around. Least liquid assets at the top, to most liquid at the bottom. CNH cash flow statements side by side on a very high level. Cash balance at the start of the year at the top, then inflows or outflows from operating, investing and financing activities during the year, and the cash balance at the end of the year at the bottom. A common joke among finance professors is that profit is an opinion, cash is a fact. Under both US GAAP and IFRS, CNH started the year with $5 billion in cash and ended the year with $3.9 billion in cash, a total net cash outflow of $1.1 billion during the year. However, the way the cash flow for the year is categorized into its three flavors is different. $2 billion in cash inflow from operating activities under US GAAP, $2.8 billion of cash outflow from investing, $300 million of cash outflow from financing. $1.5 billion in cash inflow from operating activities under IFRS, $2.3 billion of cash outflow from investing, $300 million of cash outflow from financing. Ah, says the cash flow statement expert, the IFRS CFOA is probably affected by the lower IFRS net income and the higher IFRS depreciation and amortization addback. True. But that is only a minor effect. And oh, the IFRS CFIA must be affected by the IFRS capitalization of part of the development expenses. Yes, it is, to the tune of around $200 million. But that makes the IFRS cash outflow from investing larger and not smaller. The big presentational or cosmetic difference is that the CNH US GAAP cash flow statement has a separate line for expenditures for assets under operating leases of $650 million in cash outflow from investing activities. The US GAAP cash from operating activities section has multiple separate line items related to operating leases, while under IFRS, cash from operating lease is recognized under operating activities in a single line item. In terms of amount, the US GAAP versus IFRS cash flow statement difference looks like a very big deal, but it turns out to be just a matter of the way things are presented. I hope you agree with me that for CNH, the most substantial difference between US GAAP and IFRS is in the D of research and development expenses. It impacts the income statement and more dramatically, the balance sheet. Treatment of operating leases in the cash flow statement stands out to me as well. The rest is worth noting. But in the case of CNH, not really groundbreaking.